But tonight's going to be a little bit different than usual. Um, usually I try to pick a game where you can play along with me. Um, that I know the rules to, stuff like that. Uh, but tonight, I chose a game I've never played, never even opened. So I know very little about, but I'm going to open it up, unbox it, try to learn the game, and start playing. Uh, this game is going to be a solo-only style game, but you can play along with me. Hopefully you can uh, give me tips or tricks, be like, hey, do this or do that. Uh, we'll see what we discover along the way. Now, the game I chose for tonight is actually a game I picked up while at Gen Con a few months back. Um, I'd gone to a booth specifically for a game called, uh, let me make sure I get the name correct, uh, Luna Capital. Now that was a game that's kind of tiling and doing some other stuff that seemed to kind of slide under the radar for a lot of people, but um, based on the mechanics, and the theming, and the artwork, I, I knew I would really enjoy that. Well, got to the booth, they were having some deals and sales, and it was kind of basically a buy a little bit extra get a lot more style deal and I was like okay I'll buy a little bit extra and one of the extra things I ended up uh, kind of buying or bundling up with the Luna Capital game was a game called Mayscape. Uh, they actually have two of these. Uh, they have Mayscape Labyrinth and then Mayscape uh, Ariadne. I, I'm going to mispronounce it so I do apologize. Um, Ariadne a r i a d n e um now this is from a company called uh devier uh so it's i believe their main language of what they typically release stuff in is spanish or at least that's where the company is uh based in a spanish speaking uh location i i can't say for sure exactly where that is so i don't want to make assumptions but they tend to release a lot of the games with a lot of different language sets. Uh, I know this one alone has five languages. Uh, looks like Spanish, uh, Portuguese, English, Italian, and whatever C-A-T is for. I'm terrible with languages, so I don't want to offend anyone saying the wrong one here. So I'm going to show it off here. You can s potentially see the five languages. I'll show it on my other camera in a minute, too. I'm going to open this up tonight. This is a solo only game um, for ages eight and up. It plays in anywhere from five to 90 minutes. Uh, the key thing I know about it is essentially it's a maze style game where within this one box, there are seven maze maps of some sort uh, that I don't know what, what's gonna be on them for sure. Um, going over to BGG over here, I'm gonna uh, read off kind of what it talks about the game and then we'll discover more as we open the game. It talks about how Mayscape is a fascinating and intriguing game of labyrinths for one player that guarantees intense brain-racking moments as you search for the exit. It's a game you can take anywhere play, uh, and play any time and time again to discover all the different nooks and crannies of the seven maps included. So it's a uh, it says it's a completely unique concept that promises to equally surprise and create headaches in equal measure. We'll see if it creates headaches. Um, we'll at least be looking forward to the surprises at bare minimum. Uh, so, uh, we should be unfolding a map onto the table, uh, where we start at a compass rose with the pointer you find in a box, and the box moving it along the labyrinth paths marked out in white without ever lifting it from the map. Okay, so we're going to be following the map in some way. Uh, it says that this version places us in, a, in an ancient Crete of legend, where you must enter the famous labyrinth of uh, De Dallas. You can rely solely on your wits to overcome the ordeals this box maps provides. Uh, to reach the final challenge against the Minotaur and helped Ariadne. Ariadne. I, again, I'm going to mess that up every time I try to say it, so I'll minimize how many times I mess it up at least. Uh, Ariadne. Escape. Um, and when you have gotten out the first time, then you can dare go back and find all the hidden treasures. Um, so we'll see what kind of time we have tonight. Uh, see... Uh, how many maps we can potentially move through. Uh, maybe we have time to complete it all. Maybe we only have time for a few maps. But tonight's about discovering something new. Uh, so come along with me as we uh, unbox it and then learn it together and explore whatever mazes this has for us. So I'm going to jump over here to the other camera. Hopefully we're zoomed correctly. We'll be big enough for the maps that are included. 
we can adjust the camera as we need to but let's jump on over so right here we have the box it comes in it's actually pretty small as you can tell uh, kind of pocket size uh, throw in your backpack top uh, suitcase whatever it may be take it with you and we'll get into it maybe you don't even need to carry everything with you as you go along um, so let's just see what it's about and um, as you can see it is from Devere um, so I'm gonna rip this open and we'll see what it's all about so it says it's from Pablo uh, Cispitas uh, Victor Hugo Cisternas I do apologize if I butchered those names so Pablo and Victor Hugo um, this is Mayscape Ariadne again I do apologize if I'm saying that incorrectly uh, and again we can see that um, kind of like the rest of the Devier games so like when I open some of their other games they include multiple language sets with it so you're not limited to needing to know English or potentially Spanish or whatever um, a company is located around because you can um, of course pick one of the five main languages that they tend to release it in it also looks like they have a QR code or you can go watch a trailer for it their website stuff here on the back as well uh, it looks like this actually opens almost like um, book style box instead of two separate pieces so right on top we're going to pull out these rule books now I say rule books because kind of like the other WR games they have a rule book in each language so you may spot a language that you prefer um, now of course I'm going to choose the one I can read uh, that being English I'll set the other ones aside and we'll kind of figure out what this is going to entail hopefully I don't get too much glare and then we'll, we'll adjust as we need to I'm gonna pull this down a little bit so I don't have to reach as far maybe it'll help with the glare too so quick rules um, let's see Mayscape is a puzzle that transports you to a mysterious world that is solitary and, and intricate and, fills a, and, and full of paths that are constantly changing. As you open and close the sections that make up the puzzle, you will discover different routes that may lead to madness or take you to the impossible triangle, which will transport you back to the real world. Or, if you like, to another Mayscape. So we've got some instructions and then general how to move about the maze. So we'll start with this so we're going to find seven different maze scapes in this box we'll go ahead and pull those out see what those look like so in the box simply printed in there uh, and then we got one two three four five six seven maze maps so i'm going to pull that number one aside put the rest out of the way and it looks like we have a basic almost like a pencil shape but it's just a wooden almost dowel like a pointer on it so you can easily trace where you're moving a lot easier which will actually help us on stream as well so let's see how it tells us to go about this before I open it up jump into too much of it, it does look like it kind of has some kind of instructions right here but we'll see what that means so intro in this box you'll find the seven different maze scapes each maze scape is independent from the others but we recommend that you begin with number one and then move through them in order to ensure that you get the full experience the main goal in all the maze scapes is to start at the compass rows and make your way to the impossible triangle once you reach that goal you can move on to the next maze scape sounds straightforward enough um, i'm sure we're going to find some tricky instances and weird corners that are going to uh, lead us to dead ends along the way Additionally, each mayscape has its own secondary objective, such as, for example, to find, activate, or collect objects. You, co you can look at the back of each mayscape to see what secondary objectives it includes. So it appears that this is showing our uh, primary, right here, uh, compass to triangle. Uh, secondary objectives uh, looks like five vases, and then potentially also find a uh, that almost looks like a Medusa uh, with, based on the hair, but a, a potentially uh, just a person pouring a bowl of red liquid, potentially blood. We don't know what that is. It's pictured. So as we can see right there. 
also seems to have uh, potential folding instructions one two three so we'll verify that before we open it up so preparation you'll have to play on a table flat surface easy enough we got a table we're streaming of course we got a table open the mayscape and play and lay it down so that the front and back covers are always in contact with the table use a pointer or just your finger the pointer must never be lifted off the table all mayscapes begin with the pointer on the compass so uh, we open it and lay it so that the front and back covers are always in contact with the table so right now that's true I've opened it up both um, the cover and the back are on the table so secondary objectives each mayscape had its own secondary um, if I had the eye which both of the things that we showed on this back cover were eyes uh, to fulfill this goal, you must pass the pointer over the item shown. For example, find the flag. <coughs> oh, pardon me. So, we know during this, we need to pass over, or as a secondary, pass over five vases and over this uh, person pouring blood. I'm going to call it Medusa because that's what it looks like to me. I might be wrong. So, let's see what else this says to do. So preparation, you can fold and unfold to open and close sections of the mayscape by following predefined folds. The section occupied by the pointer cannot be folded or unfolded. So your goal is to reach the exit. All mayscapes to achieve this by getting an impossible triangle. At the end of the manual, you can keep a log of the mayscapes in the box that you've completed. So starting over. Okay, so that was what we saw on the back of this. Uh, starting over, if you're feeling there's no way out, you can start over from the compass. If you do, make sure you refold may escape according to the instructions on the back. So this is a restart instruction right here. If you decide to restart the maze and uh, continue again. I'm gonna put that right there. So let's verify if there's other, anything else you need to know. Moving around, uh, you can only travel along the white path. It's not possible to jump from one path to another. Remember, they cannot lift the pointer. You can go up and down the stairs and cross on under other paths as long as you follow the continu continuity of the path as shown okay you can also go up and down the walls using the ladders okay some mayscapes have closed doors you can you must first find and get the key in order to go through the door that matches that key use the chart on the last page of the rules to take note of the keys you get so a yellow door would need a yellow key it appears you can use the portals to teleport, move the pointer directly to the other portal, ignoring the path and without folding or unfolding. In order to teleport, both portals must be visible. Interesting enough. Okay, so we know how to start over. To get out, when you reach the impossible triangle, you have escaped, and you move on to the next escape, uh, maze escape. To put the maze escape away, be sure to follow the folding instructions. If you get lost in the maze and need a little help, or in in order to get out, you can scan the QR code behind each map with the mobile device. This code will lead you to a set of clues. Now, we don't intend to use clues tonight. We intend to attempt to play the whole thing. And then we have objective records right here. So this will help us track. We can mark off when we've uh, got to the triangle if we found uh, five vases and we found Medusa along the way. So let's try to put this within view, relative view over here so we can keep track of it I should be able to use a dry erase marker on the back of that paper because I don't have a pen within reach at the moment but we shall get started on this maze I think that puts us within plain enough view of the camera uh, where we can see enough detail now this I'm not going to unfold until we actually start following this path but we have a couple of choices here so as you can see we're going to start by putting the pointer on the compass uh, we can follow the paths now that said we can unfold anything that the, the pointer is not currently on so we could unfold this if we chose to it would unfold like this but since the pointer is here we cannot unfold this unless we kind of moved around here and did the, and then open this side of it So we see a vase of vase up here. We know the exit's going to be this way. 
So we might want to consider getting over to that at some point. Of course, that is the ultimate goal. Let's start over here. And you know what? Let's go ahead and open this side. See, see a little bit more path, ultimately. We can see that this continues to a dead end. But we might be able to kind of say, hey, let's head over here. Hold that dead end. And then open this other side. And see what happens now. So now maybe we could easily travel all the way over here to get to Medusa. So now what I can do is mark on our sheet over here, the back of the thing. Hey, we found Medusa. That is one of our secondary goals. Now we're going to attempt to, so let's take a quick look. Now each of these halves fold independently so we can open that up so we're still on Medusa over here now let's take a quick look where do these paths lead I do see a vase up here we could get all the way to and we might as well check that out and then see where else we can get get away with so let's follow this all the way up here we're gonna go under this bridge we're gonna go around these corners and get vase number one so we know we're holding out that vase while I check off that we found the vase. Okay. Now what I want to do now, before I continue and put this pointer back down, I'm going to flip the rest of this open and see what we can see, what kind of maze we have going on here. So we know we're going to be over here. Let's see what kind of other vases we can find potentially. Now we see one down here, but to get to it, we need a path across to here. Well, that looks like a dead end. Oh, look, there's a door, a yellow door here. That means we would need a yellow key at some point if we see one. I'm gonna fold this back over. Now there's a vase over here. There we go. So now, because we can fold this half independently, or this quarter independently, however you want to say that, we're going to follow this path back around, back under this bridge, down and over here to this vase. Now that's the second vase. Okay, so now that we've done that, maybe we can fold this half down and see what kind of path this continues into. I'm going to try this little thing over here. I'm seeing this, kind of wondering how we get to that half. I'll think about that. But what I want to do now, I'm going to take this path over up over here. I'm going to take it inside this little gate area up to this dead end. Because then what happens as we open this back up, we're, we're inside the gates now. And continuing around this path and get this base. Getting base number three. So now, if we were to open this up, let's see. Oh, we're stuck inside. Not quite, because remember, we know the way out. Okay. Follow this back like we did a while ago. Jump onto here. So there's how another way you can get. I'm going to step onto this side of the map. Maybe we can fold this open. See what happens here. So that's still inside. So we're going to stay where we were a while ago. Come over here. And to get out, we need to open this up. Step over here. Come to this dead end to hold still. Oh look, we see a portal at least, but there's not another one exposed, so it's not going to take us anywhere quite yet. But what I am going to do, I'm going to travel up this, come into here by this portal, so I can kind of open these things up a little bit. Let's 
well, let's see what we got going on here. Okay, look, we got a vase up here. We got a vase over here that we're looking to get to. I think we've already grabbed this one. We got this up here. We got the, these to deal with. I'm going to do, I'm going to step over here. I'm going to open up to be able to step here. Redo this now. Just remember, I can fold these independently as I choose. Those are both dead ends. So I'm going to take this path way up here and around. And then I'm going to fold this over. That shows a dead end, but take this path continually up to here for another base. So now the main base we want to attempt to get to is still right here. If I open this up, dead end right there. So I'm going to step back to this side, travel around to here as we know, come up to this dead end. Now, I could take this path all the way to the triangle right now, but I'm going to wait to do that. And instead... I'm going to travel over here to this little corner to be able to open this up. Come to this corner. Which then allows me to take this corner up to this last vase. We have five vases. We found Medusa. I'm going to take this corner back, open up again, come back around to here. Which then allows us to take this path down to the triangle. So, that being done. That is maze number one, and I don't even know how long that took. 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the most. So that is maze number one completed. Um, there are, are instructions how to re close this. Pretty straightforward how to do that. I didn't even have to try very hard to close that. Um, but as you can see, the mazes flip open back and forth different ways with all those pages. Um, now that I'm not following the pointer, I'll show you kind of how this all opens. So, it's this whole size. Of course, you saw that you could fold this down, fold this over, open that up, fold it over, fold it down, and the same on the other side. Fold it up, fold it down, fold it in, get both of those together. So very, very straightforward in how that to work, how that works. So that was map number one. Now, just for, yep. So this is something I was testing. This is a very glossy printed paper. Um, so I used a dry erase marker to mark that I had found Medusa, that I found the five vases a while ago. And then that we completed the puzzle. And just to test and verify that out, uh, that's how easily that erased off there. Of course, doing it too many times might uh, leave some residue. But overall, uh, easy to mark, easy to erase, and maze number one was pretty straightforward. Um, not too crazy. But of course, there's seven more of those. Uh, but being one of those games that it's a solo game, I could easily see myself uh, throwing just the paper into a backpack. I, you don't even need the actual box because um, that would take up more space. Um, but I could easily throw a dry erase marker into that box along with it. Or, of course, just take one map at a time um, because it has the goals on that map on the back. Um, if you're playing with multiple people, maybe you're going to take turns. Maybe pass the maps around, be like, okay, you try this one, you try this one, and kind of just take turns if you're hanging out, uh, trying to waste some time. Um, or you could travel with it, you could easily do it on the plane, do it in the car. Uh, because you don't actually have to use uh, this pointer, 
you could use your finger. You could use uh, even the dry erase marker. You could kind of mark where you, you're moving along if you really chose to, but you don't even need to mark anything. Uh, you could easily uh, play the whole game and then go explore, find the rest of the little nooks and can uh, crannies of these maps. Uh, but then again, because they're mazes, they're um, almost escape room style in that uh, once you see the maze, um, you, you kind of know the path a little bit more. I don't want to divulge too much information. So I'm not going to actually play them all on stream or on camera at least. I'm going to save the rest for you to discover on your own. Um, but that was maze one of seven for Mayscape uh, Ariadne.